dude, so I'm trying to beat all the PlayStation 2 games ever made. That's 4,218 games. How do I beat all of them? I'd actually like to know myself. And the next game is Grand Theft Auto Vice City. And oh boy, am I prepared to have my nostalgia ruined because of all my adult and future opinions and views. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so terrible. Upon booting up Grand Theft Auto Vice City for the first time, it just goes right into it after some loading screens and some cool little things that kind of give the vibe of the 80s in Vice City. We get to see some cutscenes that are actually more movie-like than what Grand Theft Auto 3 was. This feels more like a gangster movie. Honestly, they did a good job and I really applaud that they tried to do it. It is kind of quick. It's very fast to get you into the game, which is fine, but I do feel a little bit more should have been explained. Right now, we learn that Tommy Versetti, the character were playing was away for 15 years and they don't really want him back probably because whatever he did to go away is not good regardless of whether or not <laughs> he deserved it or they did it to him so that they didn't get in trouble whatever it doesn't matter they're gonna send him down to vice city where they're going to deal he's gonna they're gonna have him deal drugs even though they don't do that they're gonna have him do it for him then in a couple months they're gonna come down and check on him and tax the shit out of him, which is what they fucking do and they have this one guy his lawyer help him set up all this stuff now the first thing they do is have him set up a drug deal like right after prison i don't know why just he gets out of prison he's like 15 years in prison guess i'm gonna do a drug deal can okay sure so they go to do it and it goes south horse and the only two people who make it are your main character and your lawyer so obviously once everything gets around you start the game getting into a car and going to your hotel to sleep after this sunny talks to you and is pissed because you got set up not really sure why he's pissed at you you didn't do shit but hey these are gangsters they think everyone's unreliable if anything happens even if it's not your fault sunny tells you well the only reason you're alive is because we have history but we saw at the beginning that he's only playing Tommy which is something that happens all the fucking time everyone's getting played even me I'm probably getting played Tommy's lawyer tells him about this party where he can go meet a bunch of people who might be able to help him figure out where the drugs and the money went in fact the guy who helped you set up the deal is there on the boat and you actually get to meet a bunch of people who you'll see in the future although not all of them will be seen for a long time and some of them will be more important than you think after this party we take a woman named Mercedes back to this pole position club where she walks away really oddly. I'm not really sure why she's walking like this. Maybe she's got a broom up her ass. And then we go back to our hotel, which actually serves as our house. And in this game, you can save at any one of your properties, which we'll learn a little bit more about later. But here, we use this most of the time for the probably first half of the game. At this point, they're not really sure where to go, so the lawyer suggests that he meets a guy named Kent Paul who knows all these crazy rumors and might know something that's helpful. And Kent Paul actually tells you that there is a chef that's looking real pleased with himself. And I, I really can't imagine that this chef is the one who had anything to do with anything. But we go over and kick his ass. I think he's dead. We take his cell phone and then we meet this guy named Lance. And he is our friend for the entire rest of the game. But out of nowhere, we don't know who he is. He just keeps following us around. Like, fuck you, Lance. And then some other chefs come out of the kitchen from behind you and they're like, you killed our chef guy. And they all have knives and you're like, I have a gun. So fuck you. After this, we go back to our lawyer and he says, hey, Sonny's cousin is going to go away for five years unless we make the jurors change their mind. So Tommy's like, all right, I'll go hit their cars with some hammers and intimidate them so much that they change their minds. And that's what we do. We go over and smash their cars with hammers a bunch of times until they cry and then they, I guess, change their minds. Next, we meet one of the people who was on the boat in the beginning of the game. His name is Avery and he's some fast talking Southern guy who owns a lot of property and talks about property a lot. He decides to help us if we help him. Now, we don't really see him much more during the game. Yeah, he helps us a few more times, but once he does, he's just out of there. So what he wants us to do is he wants us to go start a riot and then steal some vans on this rival company who is apparently holding onto land they will not sell that Avery really badly wants. So we go over there. Once we start a riot, we go into the complex. We are supposed to shoot these barrels, but it's hard to target just the barrels. You target people when you have a gun out. So I try targeting the barrels, but I keep targeting people. And finally, I get one of the vans, but the other one I just can't get. So I decide, well, I'll just get in the vehicle and drive it away and try and destroy it. Well, it gets kind of wedged along this fence near the water. I thought I was going to make it go in the water. Well, I pull out a hammer and just whack that thing until it blows up. In between missions, we get a call from this guy named Cortez, who is apparently the guy who is helping you set up the first deal in the game, the one where Sonny gets pissed at you for losing all the money in the drug. This guy says, well, oh, I, my condolences. It sounds really like he's kind of sending and he's also a bad guy, but that never turns out to be the case. So it doesn't matter. But he's like, hey, uh, you can come over and talk to me and we can get some stuff done here. But next I head to Avery first. 
Avery wants me to dig up some dirt on someone, but that just means killing the person, so whatever. I go to kill them. But during the mission, at the very beginning when Avery's giving us the mission, it looks like Tommy puts his hands under his chin and does that like like cute look when he's like, oh yeah, I'm the guy to do this job. <laughs> I chase this guy around the golf course with a, I'm supposed to use a golf club, but I don't. I just get in a golf cart and chase him around. He actually leaves. I get my guns, get in a car, and I drive by, shoot him because that's the coolest thing to do. Catch his car on fire and blow his ass up. The next mission Avery gives us is to drive an RC helicopter to drop dynamite into different areas of this construction site so that they stop building because, you know, dynamite will stop the building. But it's a really odd mission, honestly. Uh, there's no urgency other than the fact you only have a few minutes to do it. I mean, you're not gonna die you're somewhere else controlling an rc helicopter it is kind of finicky to use the rc helicopter but it you have plenty of time as long as you don't miss a million times because you're supposed to drop the dynamite into these barrels i don't know why the people running around chasing the rc helicopter can't just grab the dynamite and take it somewhere else but i mean you know that's beside me i don't i'm not a construction person i have no clue what they're doing anyway after this the building blows up who would have thought our next mission is with the guy who called us on the cell phone, Cortez, and he talks to us again about the drug problem and the money problem that we had earlier, and he's the one who's supposed to help us, but he is still stringing us along, obviously by the way he's talking and the fact that he's not actually helping us get the money, he's just wanting us to do something for him. Then he will help us get the money, which he does fucking not. But the really interesting part is that we're supposed to kill this guy, and he gives us a chainsaw. I mean, look, I don't think you actually have to use the chainsaw, but what the fuck? Why, are there, why is there a chainsaw in this game? You can already shoot people, run them over, blow them up. I really don't think a chainsaw is necessary, especially with how quick you gotta move sometimes, and the fact that this is supposed to be mimicking real- I mean, I, I guess. Alright, whatever. I'll take the chainsaw. I chased this dude down and hit with the chainsaw, which actually happens much quicker than I thought. I, you know, was kind of expecting a Resident Evil 4 cutscene to pop up with me chainsawing him in half, but no, no, it doesn't happen. We do it quick, and now we've got to get into a car and go to a spray shop to get our car sprayed, which is the first time it kind of explains this to you. Now, if you've watched my Grand Theft Auto 3 video, I definitely point out something that is in this game now. Thank friggin' God that they mark on the map where the spray shops and the ammunitions are. And not only that, but if you press start, there's a fucking map that shows you where you are and you can actually orient yourself. Yes, this is the kind of upgrade you want. And this is on top of everything else the game has to offer, which I'll talk about at the end. But this is just like a nice thing right at the beginning of the game. Like, oh, hey, look, you actually have a map and ways to tell where to go. Thank you. Next, Cortez wants us to meet this French guy who has some guidance chips that we have to get from him. And I, I actually fail this mission twice. First time because after the guy runs, he gets on a bike. And I, instead of hitting him and just knocking him off the bike like a normal person, I was like, I'm going to drive by, shoot him. Well, that gets me fucking busted. Then the next time I start the mission, I go take the car into the mall thinking if I park it correctly, I can just get in it and run his ass over immediately. Well, I run over some people going into the mall and I stop at these escalators here and the second I get out of, I stop the car, a cop just comes over and busts me because because my door is off the fucking car, so he just gets a free bus. Anyway, after that, I run the guy over like a normal person and win. Next, Cortez wants us to oversee another drug trade with some money and some drugs. Of course, that's how it works. I mean, what else are you trading? Pokemon cards? Anyway, Lance actually pops up and is like, hey, I'm going to help too. And you're like, okay, sure, man. So we go to this big, long alleyway, and we both get up on buildings. We watch the drug deal go down. Obviously, we have to start firing. After we start firing, these two guys pick up the briefcase of money or drugs or maybe Maybe both. I don't know. And we get on a bike and follow them. And this is cool because you learn that when you're on a bike, which was not in Grand Theft Auto 3, you can shoot forward instead of just left or right, like a drive-by in a car. You shoot forward with the motorcycle, which is very helpful, honestly. So it's kind of cool. You get to learn that. You come back and, you know, Lance is gone. After this, there's no more available missions from anyone until you get a call from the guy you just protected in the drug deal, Diaz. And he's a little insane, but he says he'll make you rich, so why not help him? He wants you to tail this guy who's stolen a small amount of money from him and find out where he's going. Then, later, we'll kill him. I do fail the mission the first time, but that's because I didn't know exactly what was going to happen or where to go. And he blows up some barrels on this rooftop. It kind of confuses me. And I fall off the building, get in the car, it blows up, and of course he gets away. Well, the second time is simple. You just follow him down the road. Yeah, he does shoot at you the entire time, but if you follow him pretty far away, none of his bullets hit, and then you eventually pass the mission. The next mission we get from him is where we actually go kill this guy, and it's actually a pretty cool mission. Lance flies a helicopter, which apparently he's 
totally licensed for. You get to shoot a machine gun, and really the whole mission is just you killing people on roofs and near cars and barrels. You just gotta pretty much kill everyone. Now, the aiming in this game is a little tough. When you lock onto someone, it's very simple, but when you're aiming the gun in first person mode, and even in this machine gun on this helicopter, it's kind of difficult because there are no sensitivity controls. Just like fucking Black, man. You guys need some slight sensitivity controls. Even like number one through five. Just give me something to work with. Because it's too fucking fast and it's really hard to adjust. There are two speeds. Fucking fast and ungodly slow. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about it. But honestly, it's really not that hard. It's not like you're getting destroyed too quick. So in the end, I did do it the first time and it's fun. It's kind of cool. It's not terrible. But always remember, sensitivity controls, people. The next mission is completely unrelated. Diaz just wants you to go get the fastest boat that someone has because he wants to have the fastest boat. So that's what we do. We go into the docks where there's tons and tons of dudes. I actually eventually just give up on shooting them, run for the boat, get in it, and take it back. And that's the end of that mission. For the next mission, Diaz asks you to get to this yacht who only sells to the very first boat who reaches it. I don't know why, it's some exclusive thing, but whatever. Anyway, at the beginning of the mission, Diaz is upset this VHS player ate his favorite tape, and he shoots it because he can't get it out. And Tommy comes up and goes, it's probably just unplugged. The guy looks back and it's unplugged. I'm expecting him to like turn around and shoot Tommy in the face because this he's an insane person. Why would you tell him that? Why would you just agree and move on? No, Tommy fucking tells him, hey, it's unplugged, dumbass. And the guy just is like, okay, yeah, whatever. I, yeah, I guess, damn, my bad. Oh, what the fuck? Anyway, this mission takes place in another boat. You actually take the boat that you stole earlier, the fastest boat, which is why he wanted you to take it. It seemed unrelated. I mean, mostly. Anyway, Lance is just in the boat waiting for you because I guess he's your boyfriend now. So you guys get together and you drive the boat first and get to the yacht. Then he drives the boat and you shoot with a machine gun. So you get the best of both worlds. You get to drive the fast boat and then you get to shoot and kill people. Next, Diaz decides he's done with us for now. We go back to Avery for a moment who asks you to dress up as a Cuban and go kill a gang lord at a funeral. And and that sounds terrible, right? Well, guess what? When you're chasing him down the road, they are literally throwing coffins out of the back of a car at you to stop you. But for some reason, they have a never-ending supply of coffins to throw at you. This mission is very weird and sounds very high stakes for a random mission, as well as just where are the coffins coming from? Are they just killing their own men, throwing them in the coffin and tossing them out at you? For the next mission we get from Cortez, we get a call on our cell phone, which if you remember is actually from the chef who you killed near the beginning of the game. This guy is asking for him and you're like, oh, I killed him. And he's like, whoa, you got big balls. You you can come work for me if you want. And Tommy's like, okay, sure. So later it's, it's on the mini map. You can go check it out. I do these missions later, so you'll see them soon. We talked to Cortez and Tommy's like, dude, I don't have time to do your side missions. And Cortez is like, but you're, aren't you hungry for opportunities from all your debts? And Tommy's like, dude, I have one debt to pay and then when I find it, that's it. Well, that's what he thinks at least. But this does make sense. Like, what, Cortez, what the hell are you doing, man? It's honestly not, it was a lot of money, I think. Wasn't it? A lot, like $50,000 or some crazy shit. Anyway, he asks you to go find a fucking tank because he's got a buyer. Then at the end of the mission dialogue, it just cuts off, like trails off and fades and you go into the mission. What else was he gonna say? I feel like it may have been important, but I mean, you know, it, whatever. It's a fucking tank and you have to go kill a bunch of military people. To be honest with you, I didn't know what to expect, but you really gotta be a careful because this is one of those first mission walls where you get to it and there's a lot of guys. This is the first time you fought this many guys on foot and you have to kill them. You can't just run away from them. The docks mission with the boat, I just ran because why not? I'm, I don't need to fight them. I can just get on the boat and leave. But here you have to kill everyone to get in the tank. I feel it one time because, you know, it's kind of out of nowhere. But the second time I learned that crouching down behind something, they just kind of stay where they are. I don't know why, but they stay where they are. So you get opportunities to pop back up and shoot them. You kind of got to use that first person view with one of the rifles. You can't just use the lock on with maybe an SMG or a pistol. You got to use that so you can hit them from far enough away. You don't get creamed immediately. And I mean, once you get the tank, yeah, you get like a three or four star wanted level, but you're in a fucking tank. Who's going to stop you? Our next mission is from the same guy who led us to the chef where we got the cell phone and where we got lots and lots of calls from random people. But this guy, Kent Paul, tells us that Lance, who has decided to attack Diaz, you know, the insane guy who is having people killed left and right that you worked for a little bit ago, has tried to kill Diaz because I guess he found out Diaz killed his brother, Lance's brother. So, well, that didn't work out. He got caught. So he's being tortured at a little facility downtown and you need to go save him. Obviously, Lance is supposedly your friend and kind of helping you. So you're like, okay, yeah, I got to go help. 
What the game doesn't tell you is that this is probably one of the hardest missions in the fucking game. Not the worst, just the hardest. This mission blows. Here is why. Lance is dying, so you need to get in your car and you need to go to him before he dies. He's bleeding out. On your way there, you could get fucked over. But let's just say you get there as fast as you possibly can. You still have to comb through this little compound with lots of guys with guns and get to him. Now, this is one of the times where I feel like you get to see the uniqueness of Grand Theft Auto. I die a different way every fucking time. I'll tell you what. I die from my car blowing up. I die from guys shooting me. I die because I accidentally shoot Lance from far away. I didn't realize I was shooting him. I lose because Lance leads out. I'm like, okay. And then one time I actually save Lance. We walk forward a couple steps. Then he bleeds out again, which I wasn't prepared for. The next time I get him, I get him in the car and we get blown up. Oh, I don't know. Almost immediately after we leave the compound because people are riding your ass the entire time. You need to take Lance to the hospital. This mission is fucking hard. It takes me about 10 tries to actually get him into the hospital. Here's the secret. Sometimes in the middle of the compound, a trash master spawns. You need to get the trash master because it's the only car that will not blow up immediately upon being smashed with thousands of cars. So you just need to get him in that and take him to the hospital where he waltzes in with a, an SMG just in his hand. Just I'm bleeding out, but I'm going to go right into this hospital with an SMG. So you got to get the trash master. It is possible, people. It is possible. The next mission isn't nearly as hard, but this time we actually get to go kill Diaz for being a little asshole. I mean, it doesn't seem like very many people like him anyway. And Cortez, thinking out loud during one of his missions, says he thinks Diaz may have had something to do with the drug bust gone wrong at the beginning of the game, but doesn't know. He's just thinking out loud. So you and Lance get together and run around his mansion, killing all of his henchmen and finally getting to him and putting two bullets in his head. Haha, <laughs> later Diaz. Our next mission is with Cortez, and this is actually the last mission that he has for you because he is fleeing into open waters to take whatever he has with him and do whatever it is he's going to do. So he's like leaving the country. You never see him again, but he needs your help because he's going to be followed by a bunch of people, a bunch of French people, which he does not like people from France, I guess. I guess they're giving him the runaround. So he has you shoot them standing on top of his boat. You drive for a little bit. You shoot, you shoot, you shoot. I thought this mission was going to be harder because so many people are all around you in boats, and I kind of half expect expected to be shot up quite a bit, but you never are, which is nice. You do shoot down some helicopters and an attack helicopter and some boats, which makes me feel weird from the Lance mission that was so difficult where there was no boats, no machine guns, and no helicopters. So whatever. Uh, the balance is a little off sometimes. But after this, apparently you guys are friends and he's like, adios, watch my daughter, Mercedes or whatever. And Tommy's just okay with this. He, he didn't help you with shit, man. Yeah, he paid you some money, but this dude did nothing for you and you helped him a bunch and now he's gone forever. I'm a little confused about that. Our next mission takes place at our newly acquired mansion that we stole from Diaz after we killed him because, of course, why not? That thing's just sitting there. Anyway, everyone's all up in arms about being the new players in town. Tommy, Lance, the lawyer, and Avery, who is there to only give you the advice to work with real estate, which is how we learn about assets in the game. This is, I think, the last time we ever see Avery, too, which is really weird that he's, like, hanging out with you guys, like, palling around in your mansion, and then he's just gone. But anyway, you literally are upset that people are not paying their protection money because Diaz is dead and they're like oh we don't have to do this anymore Diaz is dead so you're upset and Tommy says I'll be back in five minutes literally five minutes you have to go to the mall and shoot out a bunch of windows from all the people who owe you protection money at the end of it even though you have like a five star wanted level you just goes away but then you learn about the assets and this is where Avery told you about it you're supposed to have a front for all this stuff so you buy assets in town and there's like eight or nine different assets you can buy there are different businesses that you then use to kind of launder your money one of them is literally just printing money so I don't know how that works but some of the other ones are like an ice cream shop the Malibu building here you have a strip club you have a, an auto sales place there's a lot of places what you do is you get enough money you go buy it it has some missions you complete the missions once you do you start getting income passively from these places as time goes by it just racks up the income now it's not a lot and the only reason to get it is to get more assets there really isn't very much more to buy in the game so once you buy all of it and do all the missions there really isn't anything else to use use it on, but this is how you get the money to then continue through the rest of the game. However, I don't really do that. I do buy one place, the print works later on. In fact, I just kind of stick to the main missions, something that I wish I hadn't, but it, it all worked out in the end. Our next mission is back at the mansion again, where Lance tells us that there's one more bar out there that just isn't paying money because they have a gang of local thugs to protect them. And Lance is supposed to be handling it, but he's actually kind of weird, and so Tommy's really pissed immediately. Uh, I guess now he's turned into Diaz 
guys. I mean, the game kind of has this weird shift right at this point, just before this, when we get the mansion. It used to be about finding where the money was and the drugs were for Sonny, but once we get to this point, I think Tommy realizes that he is just going to take over the town and stay here and deal with Sonny when he comes up. But again, Lance is acting weird, and so Tommy freaks out on him, and we go take care of it ourselves. This mission isn't too hard. I do die the first time because when you get to this place, you're supposed to kill this gang of people, and I throw a grenade in, and it kills me, so whoops. The next time, though, I don't kill myself, and after you blow up this big section of people in this little area, two guys on motorcycles drive out of there, and apparently you've got to kill everyone, so I, I, I don't even know if you're teaching him a lesson at this point. There's no lesson to be learned when you're dead, but you chase him, you kill him, good on you. The next mission I take is back at the mansion. Lance is yelling at a guy named Mike about messing up the timer on an, a detonation device that was supposed to blow up in the mall, which I'm confused about as well. I guess we're going back to the mall to blow stuff up. Well, it screwed up and now the cops are crawling all over the place. What's interesting here is that while Lance is yelling at this guy and this guy was supposed to have done something and he did, he did it incorrectly. Tommy doesn't really get that upset with him. He's like, it's all because of you, Mike. Mm, but he, earlier he yelled at Lance for one small thing and I really don't understand, but let's just say that maybe he has a bad feeling about Lance. Although, I'm really not sure. I, I don't know. Some of the interactions between characters are just a little off sometimes. I'm sure it's because there's a shit ton of stuff in this game. So, whatever. Anyway, the whole point is that you're supposed to dress up as cops, go into the mall, blow it up, and then leave. This mission is probably the worst mission in the game. And here's, what, here's why. The mission itself isn't tough to understand. There isn't a lot to do. You lure two cops into a garage. Has to be two. Mike apparently goes with you, but he's not there. You and Lance get the cop uniforms, just let it happen. You get into a car, a cop car, drive over to the mall, walk in, set the explosive, run out. When you get outside, you have a five-star wanted level. Get in your car, drive back. That's it. This is not simple, though. See, first of all, getting the two cops into the garage is a little difficult. It's not terrible, but it's a little difficult. You need to have at least a two-star wanted rating for them to be aggressive enough to really follow you in there. One star never worked. I don't know why, but two is okay. But sometimes they block up the garage door and it says you got to clear it before it will close. What, what the fuck, man? I, once that happens, you might as well just abandon the mission and retry because it's really hard to get in there and do that without making a mess or trying to find a spray shop to get your wanted level gone and then let them leave. I mean, it just seems like a lot of extra steps. So you, you get it in one go and that's good. Here's the big problem. Getting into the mall, exploding the store, and getting out is fine. Once you get out, you have a five-star wanted level. This is impossible. <laughs> it's okay. Obviously, it's not impossible. I beat the game, but god damn. There is something wrong with the aggressiveness of the cops in this game. Honestly, at five stars, they are relentless. At four stars, they are just as relentless, just slightly less people. I don't even know. And that's not even the biggest problem. The biggest problem is fucking Lance. When you have to put the entirety of a mission in the hands of an AI companion who can't get the fuck out of a car and run, it's over. It's fucking over. You really cannot get out of the cop car when you get in the mall. When you get out of the mall, you have to stay in the cop car because if you have to get out and get to another car, Lance just can't do it. They are so utterly aggressive. It's like it's like a gross aggressiveness. Like I don't know who programmed that. I understand that they want you. They want you. They want it to be tough, but dude, there's no way. It is so hard. Lance just dies so much. And there's some ridiculous bullshit. Look at this fucking cop appear out of nowhere and throw a spike strip down. We lose immediately. Everyone just blows our asses up. What the fuck is wrong with this mission? You even come around the corner after getting out of the mall and get a wanted star pickup. I eventually end up trying to just find another one because it is so hard and they're so aggressive. At four stars, you still get the large armored cars coming after you, but at three, they stop and you only get the cop cars and sometimes the black vehicles, but you, you just, ha you have no choice. You have to get those pickups because they are, I don't know how else to say it, man. They just, e they eat your ass. They're like, I think that's their job. They've all been hired to eat your ass and that is, it's life or death. It's either eat your ass or die. And obviously all of them have families and they don't want to die. Once I finally get my ass back to the mansion, Lance gives me a call afterwards and says, don't make me upset. Don't be mean to me. My brother did that and he got killed and I'm just upset. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Tommy was kind of pissing on him. But you know what? I, it was only the one time, I think, like maybe, maybe twice. Um, I, Lance is acting weird. Everyone, Lance is suspicious.
Once that abomination of a mission is over, we go to the guy who originally called us to ask for Leo, the chef, on our cell phone. He's like, come over to my, you know, cafe, and then we do. And this is the best thing about having NPCs still walking around in the middle of like, mission dialogue. This guy is clueless. He can't read the fucking room and just stands right in our way, walks through people. It's hilarious. It's awesome. But this mission is supposed to be us racing a boat through these little yellow circles. And I mess it up a couple times because driving a boat is hard. When you step on the gas and you push a direction it really cuts that direction and this one you have about 20 or 30 seconds give or take of leeway and it's honestly not enough if you make even one decent mistake if you just get kind of caught up so really what you need to do is you need to go once or twice kind of memorize where things are and then just go full speed and hope you make it the next mission this guy gives us is a lot more difficult. You need to get a four-door car with enough seating for four people because you go pick up some of his friends and go fight the Haitians. Pick them up, you drop them off, you help them fight through this little alleyway where you eventually get into a van and drive it back to the shop because the van has drugs or something in it and they need it. So it really isn't too bad. Once you get in the van, you just gotta get out of there and you make it back easy. The next mission this guy gives us is even harder. We get on a boat with one of his friends and we just kind of drift up to him like we've pulled up to him in a Prius going only five miles per hour and we're very quiet and while we're behind them we have to shoot them I don't know why it's just there's a bunch of dudes now the first time I throw a grenade I don't know why and the second I throw the grenade every person turns around and just nails my ass it's so funny but then the next two times I, I learned a little bit more about the mission I shoot the boats blow some people up get on onto the island shoot some more people on the buildings get the briefcases get in a car I have a four-star wanted level now this time though this time I don't have Lance so if I get out of the car it's not a big deal but I find a spray shop immediately and then I get in it and I'm fine and then I get over with the mission it's just this time it wasn't nearly as big of a problem like I said I don't have so far to go I don't have dumbass Lance with me and honestly this mission wasn't too bad the missions that are hard are the ones that you need to just play a couple times and learn so that you can do it properly and yeah you can make some mistakes but it's a difficult mission it's the missions where you are literally the game is literally working against you where Lance is just an idiot and won't get out of the car and run or the game is so aggressive that everyone just jumps on you and holds you down and slaps your little nuts around. This next set of missions is a little confusing. We go meet this woman who apparently is into Juju. She gives you some tea that makes you very forgetful and kind of just wander to her house for the next missions, which I mean, you know, that that's kind of a cool way to make it seem like you're going there even though you don't really know what you're doing. She has you do some stuff. The very first mission, she has you pick up these packages of powder, which she says are not drugs, they're something else, which, okay, sure, whatever. Probably stuff she put in your fucking tea. This one, you actually do get a high wanted level because you're picking up packages that the cops believe are drugs, which are probably drugs. And it's honestly easier to do this one on foot since a lot of them are pretty close in between little buildings. This means that the cops can't just be so aggressive. They eat your asshole. They actually let you move around. And that's great because once you finish the mission, the stars are gone. And there are a couple star pickups, so that's really nice. And this mission isn't too hard. We return to her with the powder and he's still in a haze from the tea he had last time because this is, you know, where I was talking about. So now he's just accepting whatever she tells him to. And the next thing you do is, again, use a little RC plane, except this time it's more like a more like a winged plane, not a helicopter. And you actually drop bombs on these people and boats and stuff and blow them up. This is the, the first time I do it. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. You do have a couple planes, so if they shoot them down, you have more chances. But you just drop bombs on them and blow them up. It's a little hard to control this plane. It's kind of like the water plane and from number three. And even this one has a water plane, although I never have to use it, which thank God. But this is a, it's a little difficult to control the plane, but once you do, it's you really don't lose unless you get too close for them to shoot you down. The last mission this woman has for us is to get a sniper rifle and help her friends or boys out uh, by fighting Cubans or Haitians. I don't know. They're, you keep working on both sides. I'm not really sure who I'm fighting it, but I, I got to shoot some people with a sniper rifle. Now, the sad thing is, is I had bought the, the auto sniper rifle and then you pick up the sniper rifle that's not auto. So it takes a long time to, you know, rechamber the, the shot, which sucks. I wish I had not picked it up, but whatever. You get a, one of those pill pickups that slows things down. I think it's called a rampage pickup and you just kind of watch over people. You don't, you're not going to Attacked. You just shoot people. You gotta make sure you shoot them and it's slow motion so it's really not too bad. It's an easy mission. We go back to the guy who's at the cafe and we need to get a, a Haitian car and pick up his friend. We go meet some other Cubans to go infiltrate the Haitians where you then get into a building, you set some explosives and you've got to go through this very specific stairwell to actually get away because they lock you into this area. I didn't actually know where this was for a little while. It took me about five or six attempts because I'm like, how do I get away? I just don't have enough time and I don't know where I'm supposed to go. 
go. Finally, I found the steps. It, it's just kind of hidden off to the side. But this isn't a terribly tough mission. It's more, again, just learning what the mission has in store for you and then doing it quicker the next time. Our next set of missions is for the band Love Fist, who is apparently very, very popular. They want you to get them some drugs, which are a weird set of like ingredients that makes them action. I don't know what the fuck it is. But once you get it, it's pretty simple. You get into the car, this dealer takes your money, runs, you go gun them down and get the stuff from them. But then right after that, they call you and say, well, wait, before you bring it back, also bring us a lady. So you go get Mercedes. You're just like, hey, can you come back and bang this band? And she's like, okay, sure. And But once you get her, for some reason, you have only a few minutes to get back to them. So you need to drive carefully to get back to them or you just lose. The next mission they give you is to kill a stalker that is trying to kill them. It's a very simple mission. You go to the area where the stalker's at, the stalker gets in a car, you gun him down. That's it. Pretty simple. The next mission I do is I decide to go see this guy Big Mike and this biker gang who apparently is, I don't know, it's probably like the Hells Angels or something. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. But you go to him and he's like, well, I don't do any favors for anyone because we're supposed to, we're, apparently he's supposed to help protect love fist backstage i'm not exactly sure but he says the only way i'll help you is if you do some shit me. which the first thing is can you ride a motorcycle so you have a motorcycle race the nice thing about the motorcycle race is that the guys on the motorcycles can't turn very well so the first time you come to a big turn after one of the checkpoints they just all fucking face plant into a building and i go past them and i win the next mission from him is called Messing with the Man, because of course it's a biker game and they're messing with it. Anyway, you're supposed to just cause destruction, and which is, you know, that's that's kind of what the name of the game is, right? But you literally just go out and do stuff, and there's a meter called the Chaos Meter, which is never used again, which, pff, okay, whatever. But you, you just need to create chaos, and the meter goes up. But the thing is, is that the best way to get the meter up is to just blow cars up. And for a little while, I try some different things. Uh, it doesn't work, and I'm like, dude, I can't get the meter up quick enough. Even even if I live, I cannot fill the meter fast enough. Well, eventually I realized just destroying cars by themselves is fine. Doesn't have to kill people, doesn't have to be cops involved. In fact, I don't even think you need to have a wanted star. You just need to blow shit up. So I find a parking lot with a bunch of cars. I just start chasing cars down on the street on a bike and shooting them from behind. When you blow them up, other cars blow up and the meter fills up pretty quick. I do end up getting some wanted stars because I just, at this point, I'm like, okay, so I just want to destroy some cars because I keep losing because I'm not really focusing. So I focus destroy some cars and win very very quickly the last mission big mike has for you which is the last time again you see him you do three missions and that's it you need to get on a motorcycle that's fast you need to ride it up a stairwell and jump onto a set of roof once you get on the roof you get down and find mike's bike apparently they stole his bike and he's all pissed you get his bike and you drive it away and bring it back to the bar the first time i failed because i i didn't know exactly where i was going but the second time is pretty simple once i learn where to go and how to get out of there i'm out of there and i bring the bike back and that's the last thing we need to do after this, I head back one more time to Love Fist, and they need me to escort them to their concert. However, when we get in the car, we find that the person who I was supposed to have killed before, the stalker, is actually still alive? I'm not really sure how. They exploded in a fiery explosion of cars. But anyway, they set a bomb in one of their whiskey or scotch bottles, a bottle of alcohol, and you have to drive their little limo fast, or the bomb will blow up. And so they're in the back defusing the bomb while you're doing this, and they're saying some funny things. It's, re it's a really simple mission. You just take it down this long stretch of road. And yes, when you slow down, it's pretty scary because that meter fills up fast for the detonation. But all you have to do is get to a decent spot where you can do a quick UE and start up again. The meter will slow down and then go all the way back down. And by the time you get back to where you were, they're already done. It's really not a hard mission. If you if you panic, you, you'll lose because you're smashing things. But as long as you tap X, I didn't even hold it. I tapped it to keep it at just the right speed. And it's not hard. I just tapped with a little rhythm and kept the car going fast but not so fast that I cleared this long stretch of road. I just tapped it, did a Yui, tapped it, got them where they were going. Mission over. This is the difficult part of the game because I decided to wait until the very end to do it. See, you need money and you need to buy assets. This is where I said the assets would come into play, didn't I? The first thing I do is I buy the asset print works, which is where you literally just print out money. It is one of the few absolutely required assets. Like I said, there are about nine assets total for you to buy. You have to buy at least six and complete their missions and begin getting their income for the rest of the game to play out. That means I need to buy six 
six places and then do their missions. And I wish I had done this earlier because you need a lot of money to buy some of these. One of them is 10,000 in the boatyard. One of them is 30. One of them is 60, 70. It's just a lot of money. I needed to be getting this passive income as I was playing the game because every time you do a mission, about half a day passes after the mission, you get that income much quicker. A full day gets you, you know, like 20 or 30,000. Half a day gets you about 10 to 15, but that's perfect. I would have had plenty of time. So I waited too long, whatever. I go buy print works. The first thing I have to do, the guy says, we need special plates to print money. So you need to go get the information. Kent Paul is back in that strip club. You go talk to him and he says, oh yeah, there's some guy on a boat. He'll give you the information. You run to the boat, you climb up the stairs of the boat and you intimidate this guy into giving you the information about where the plates are coming in. I, I die because there are a lot of guys in this boat and the stairwells are really narrow. So it's kind of hard to see. And honestly, the shooting in these games still is not, it's not balanced enough. Sometimes it doesn't work very well. I don't like the targeting and shooting. I wish I had more control of my character. To be honest with you, I wish I could strafe. Strafing would help immensely. And being able to aim in with first person with all guns, right? But at least strafing, I'd be able to keep my body facing the enemy instead of my character turning, even though they're locked on, and running away. I just want to strafe to shoot people so I can kind of avoid damage, but that's not how it works. I fail once, but the second time, pretty simple. I get it and I leave. The next mission for Printworks involves me actually getting the plates from this courier who lands at a plane. The first time I fail it because I just screwed up and I got blown up. But the next time I chase him down, he gets stuck on a wall. I blow his ass up, get the plates, and I'm right near the Printworks. So I walk into it, mission over. This now unlocks the Printworks to generate income for me, which is great because the only one that was doing it before was my mansion because I guess that's you know, it's just a story thing. But now I actually get $8,000 from it a day. Now I go next to the boat yard where I actually killed the courier from earlier and I buy it for like 10,000 and you only have one mission to do which is great but it is a little difficult you got to get in a fast boat and you got to collect these drug packages it takes me about three or four times because again I've got to learn where they are that way I can anticipate because it is a little tight on time you need to beat it in a certain amount of time so just you know learn the boat a couple times and go through a little race course you'll eventually get it this now lets the boat yard get about $2,000 a day, which is very small, but at least it's something. However, I've run out of fucking money because I've died a few times and had to rebuy guns and body armor. So now I need to generate that income for these few places. And I go do the payphone missions, which are side missions, but still whatever. They're very easy. It's pretty much the first three is kill three people. The first two are just kill them. The third one, you got to make it look like an accident. You can't use weapons. You just have to smash into a car until it blows up, which wasn't hard. The last mission though is is actually pretty good. I actually really enjoyed this one. And in between each mission, I pick up the money, the income. But this mission is kill like nine people. They're all scattered about the area doing different things. Some of them see you, some of them don't. You've got to go around and kill them in about eight minutes or nine minutes or so. And this is more fun because it's like speed killing. You have to kill these people. You need to get to them. You don't want them to run away too far. And it doesn't feel like it's impossible to do. It's a little difficult and it takes me a couple tries just because some people are in different areas and you're rushing to get to them. But it, it it was a really fun mission and I wish there were more missions like this in the game, but at least this one was fun. The very last payphone mission has you go to an airport, shoot someone, get the briefcase, and leave. You do get a bit of a wanted star level, but I get into a car and get into a spray shop. This one isn't really that difficult either. You just wait for him to stop talking, you shoot him, you get the briefcase, and you're done. After this, I finally have enough money to buy the ice cream shop. And this mission is tied for the worst mission in the game. I think there's three. There's Copland, there's this one, and there's another one after this. But this one is, you buy the ice cream shop, and the only thing you do is you get into the Mr. Whoopi van, where you sell ice cream and quotes. And it's actually drugs. You have to go turn on your music, then stop, come to a complete stop around where people are, and sell them the drugs. A little arrow appears above their head, they walk up, it takes about three or four seconds and they buy some drugs for me. There are some issues though. Every four times you sell, so every four people you sell to, a cop will see you and you'll get a wanted star. If you don't get rid of that star, you'll get another one and another one. Every four. So that means what you want to do is you want to sell four and run away, wait for that one star to go away, and then sell four more. The other thing is, is that gang members don't want you selling on their turf. The problem is, is you got to sell on their turf. There's no, no nothing else you can do. You gotta. So you just got to be careful. The big problem is if you exit the vehicle, the mission 
mission is over. And here's the worst part. You must sell 50 people drugs without getting out of the car, without blowing up. And it took me about, oh, I don't know, 40 minutes to do. Like once I started doing it and got it done, it took about 40 minutes because sometimes there are no customers. Right here, you see, you stop, it says there's no customers around here. Sometimes people get fucked up and they can't reach your van. And once they're doing that, they will not be able to buy from you. You just need to like run them over or get far enough away where they go away. It is so difficult because the second you stop to start selling people stuff, you need to just constantly flip the camera around to make sure a gang member is not going to pull you out of your car. This mission was abysmal. It's just no fun. It's not hard. It's just frustrating because you just drive and stop, drive and stop. Sometimes the game works against you. Sometimes you just don't get anyone to buy your shit. After that terrible mission, the next asset I buy is the Kaufman Cab Company, and you've got to do three missions for them. The first one is picking up someone at their house to take to the airport. Well, you have a small time limit. It's not too hard. But the second you get there, the rival cab company comes up and picks him up. So you've got to smash into his car until the guy gets out and gets into your car. Not sure why he would get out of that guy's car and get in yours if you're smashing him, but whatever. You get into the airport. It's a pretty simple mission. The next mission wants you to destroy three rival cabs, and it's a little difficult because the second they catch on fire, they will kamikaze into you, and I died like three or four times because I didn't expect it. They just catch on fire and will not stop ramming you, and they will blow up on you, and then you'll blow up. So you gotta be a little careful. You gotta make sure that you have enough room to get away from them after they catch on fire. The last mission for the Kaufman Cab Company wants you to go to a specific area where there are a bunch of rival cabs, and you're actually caught in this small area. They block you off. There are like eight or nine cabs and they chase you around for like a minute and a half you have to survive you don't have to kill them you just gotta survive after that minute and a half some special looking cab comes up and it's the rival cab company's leader you've got to destroy him that's it i don't think anyone else really comes after you but he is smart he backs up and waits for you to kind of make a mistake and then slams into you but at the beginning of this mission in a little pool next to the area you get caught in there's a rocket launcher so i just pick it up get out of the car and when he comes at me i blow his ass up getting closer to having having six total assets for the game to continue the last two missions. But I've got two more places. The next one is really embarrassing. Like, I don't understand why this is something they decided to do. You buy a strip club and the only mission you have is to go get a dance. But you have to spend $300 in this back room with this woman dancing to finish the mission. And you spend $5 every like, like 10 seconds. So you literally have to sit there for, I don't know, a couple minutes while she dances awkwardly and your character just kind of of darts his gaze around the room and it's I mean I, I it's not interesting I don't understand it wasn't interesting to me when I was younger either I don't this is stupid and I don't know why they didn't just give you a mission but no you have to go back and watch this blocky lady dance around I have one asset left to complete. And this one I decide to do is the Sunshine Autos asset. I thought, well, you know what? This one doesn't really have any missions. The only thing you have to do is collect six cars and bring them to the garage. It's the first list out of, I believe, four of different cars you bring back. And the more you bring, the more money you get. But you only need to do the first list for it to be completed. At first, I thought it wasn't going to be too bad. This first list requires you to get cars that randomly generate when they're driving around. The other lists apparently have cars parked in specific spots so it's much easier you can just look online and find maybe a picture of where it is or or the location but this one you just have to drive around until you find the cars at first the first five cars it took me about 20 minutes or so to get them i was a little worried because i wasn't finding some of them but it doesn't compare to the last car and this is why i believe this is tied for the worst mission in the game this last one the blista compact is apparently supposed to be a rare car that people are driving around i've only seen it once i actually saw my character in the video drive Driving it. I didn't even realize I had seen it once, but I drove around for almost three hours, three real hours driving around Grand Theft Auto, not killing anyone, not fighting, not doing cool stuff, driving in circles around the map until someone spawned with this stupid car. That's it. There was nothing exciting. It's I spent all morning, though with small time I have to play, looking for a stupid car. And when I found it, that was it. I, I mean, the last two missions were pretty simple. I mean, I'm still going to go over them, but wow, terrible, terrible. I don't understand. Like, I don't expect to be done with the mission in five seconds, but three real hours taking for just for a car to spawn in doesn't make any sense. An hour at this point, I can understand, but that's hindsight. It just seems silly that they had you. The rest of the lists have cars parked around the fucking map. You can just grab. I don't understand. This was terrible, and I do not recommend anyone do this one. Do one of the other missions. Do the one where you hire porn stars. At least that's something. This is silly. 
Once you complete this, Printworks finally has the second to last mission, Cap the Collectors, where Sonny sends people over to tax all of your assets because obviously you haven't gotten his drug money back yet, so now he's come to tax all of your assets. You've got to kill a bunch of guys who are coming to tax them before they tax all six of them. Now, they do go to them, get off their bike, and go over to where your money icon is to tax them. You can just kill them, and when you kill them, they drop all the tax money on the ground, so you can at least pick it up and keep it. But this one was pretty simple. They're all on bikes. You just get in a car and ram into them. That's it. The very last mission has Sonny actually visiting us at our mansion. And this is where we find out that Lance betrayed us, which I mean, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of obvious that he was. He was acting a little weird. And I mean, I don't know. They, they were printing a fake money to give to Sonny to just like make him go away. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly why it ended exactly this way. It feels a little ham fisted maybe, but you have to kill both Lance and Sonny. Lance first, Sonny second. You also have to make sure that the mafia doesn't steal the money from your safe. So at First, you stand in this room where their safe is, kill some mafia members, then you go fight Lance. You pretty much just run through a set of stairs and corridors through your mansion until you get to the roof, where you then run past them, go up onto a little ledge, and kind of slowly inch your way forward until you can see just the tops of their heads, and then aim in with one of the guns and just shoot them in the head. It's pretty simple. It takes a second because you feel like you can just run up with an SMG and shoot them, but there's so many people that you can't do that. You've got to run away and find a spot to hide. Once you kill Lance, you go back into the mansion, you also have to try and make sure they don't steal money from your safe. But I mean, once you kill Sonny, the game's over. So I'm not too worried. They don't steal that much money that quickly. It's like $10 every second. And it's not that big of a deal. I mean, at least for me, I'm not playing anymore after this. So again, I do the same thing. I run around on the balcony up in the top of the stairs and try and find a spot where I can see just the tops of their heads or at least, you know, make it hard for them to hit me. Eventually, I do pull up my SMG, run down towards Sonny and just fire one last barrage of bullets his way because because the gang members at this point are continuously respawning. You almost have no breath. You just keep fighting and fighting. So I figured at this point, just run out and kill. Once you kill him, the game is over. The only two people left are Tommy and the lawyer. And you guys just, that's it. You are going to now run the town Vice City. And it's the end of the game. And it was a very interesting game. I think the game does a lot right. It feels pretty good. It feels much more of a solid experience. It feels almost like a, a, a mafia type movie, a Godfather type. They set the scene pretty well. At the beginning, you've got this overarching goal. Sonny needs to get the money back from Tommy. Tommy's trying to get the money. Halfway through, he realizes he doesn't need to get the money. He's just going to run Vice City. And then Sonny comes to punish him. You meet some people on the way. You learn a bit about Vice City. You buy some literal property that you can get money from. There's a lot of side missions. There's some races. There's a bunch of other things to do that I did not do. But I beat the game. I saw credits, so that's all that matters. And you know what? I honestly did probably about 80% of the game anyway. There's not really not that many missions left to do so I'd say I completed a decent amount of the game I didn't get any of the, the hidden packages this time I didn't even look for them because there wasn't really a reason I didn't need it so whatever but the game is pretty good I think the issues that I had with the game are how aggressive the few times it mattered the AI were when you get four to five wanted stars it's just too aggressive almost to the point where you cannot even drive forward they literally stop you from driving forward you have to get kind of lucky and weave in and out of both both traffic and just off road because otherwise you can't get away. They can destroy you very, it doesn't matter how many of them die. All they have to do is ram into you and you're dead. The other thing is don't make me rely on an AI partner who cannot get the fuck out of the way of a blowing up car or bullets. Like I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want the AI to get out of the car and stand there and just blow up. I, I want to have my own fate, in my own hands. I don't want AI to do it. So I, that's something I don't want to do. And I think, I think the story is just a little, I don't want to say fractured but sometimes some of the things that happen don't quite make sense. I talked about those in the video as I came up, so you, you got a good idea of what that is. And I don't think it's terrible. There's a lot going on, and, you know, there's only so much they can do. This is the PS2 era, and they're already doing quite a bit. But I do wish it was slightly more put together and made more sense. Like, Avery is just gone. Big Mike is just gone after this. You never did. Cortez just leaves and never really technically helps you with what you need. These characters just come and go, and I, it's not that interesting. I, I like that Lance is constantly there. Your lawyer's kind of constantly there. Sonny is always looming over your head. But these other characters just come and go very quick. It's like they don't matter after that. They don't provide anything in the future. There's no shop to buy things or you can't hire goons to come help you. No, it's just that's it. You, you do their missions and, and it's all over. 
some of my nostalgia was ruined. I think the game has a lot of areas to improve on, but you know what? It was still fun. A lot of the missions were actually pretty well balanced. Some of them were a little too easy, but they were very early missions that were teaching you the game. And then some of them, I did the missions out of any difficulty order. I didn't look for the most difficult ones for last or anything. Just I just did them as they came up, kind of following whatever I wanted to do. So sometimes it felt like the difficulty was out of whack, but really it's just because I chose to do things at certain times. It, it's a good game. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I got to play it again. I'm glad it's done, though. Some of those end missions that I did, you know, kind of screwed with the flow of the game, I think. I could have done them at different times and maybe broken it up, but I decided to do all those shitty missions at the very end. So whatever. Game number 25, everyone. This is game 25. 25 games in. Vice City. I ate it like the asses the cops tried to eat when they kill me. I don't know why I said it like that, but that's what happened. I did. it. All right. On to the guessing game. Do do, 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 do. All right, everyone, the guessing game. Here is the picture from Stable Diffusion. What game do you think I'm going to play next? This is a good one. I remember buying it and just playing it for a little bit. I, I beat it because I had to beat it. I bought it and I just sat down one day and beat it. And I was like, wow, I, you know, this is an all right game. This is a game that exists. So do you think you can guess it? Not a very popular game, at least not that I can tell. I did notice that there was a small speedrunning community for it. I mean, on the PC version. Oh, hint, got a PC version too. It's not the greatest game. Don't worry, it's not. You're not missing anything, oh, but you'll see what it's about. So thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I can't believe 25 videos in, 25 games beat. And Vice City, this one was a little, I was a little not sure what was gonna happen. So I'm glad I got to beat it. Everyone got sick recently and it was kind of tough. Everything's been a little tough. Uh, you know, I have two kids. It's just things are tough. So I'm glad I got to play the game as much as I did and beat it. I've been enjoying the shorter games because of facts. Now, I've got some DDR stuff. I got a DDR pad. I've got the eye toy and the mic for singing. And those games are going to go by pretty fucking quick. So when I choose to do them, that's that's what's going to happen. They're going to be fast videos. But I, I got some good games coming up. I've already got like the next six games set up in my mind. And I'm super excited because some of them are great. Some of them I've never played and I hear good things things about. Some of them are just fun. I don't know. I'm really excited. I've been enjoying this. And also, here's another bit of information. I have money together to buy a Retro Tink 5X. Now, if you look up Retro Tink, R-E-T-R-O-T-I-N-K, there's a website this guy has been making these adapters you can plug your PS2 in or actually any old console, even a 360 or a PS3. And they are upscalers. They're very powerful. The one I'm going to get is a 5X Pro. It's 300 bucks. It's literally a PlayStation 5 digital edition but guess what it will make all my old consoles look really nice and obviously for this channel having it look as nice as I can make it is great because I'm not playing these on emulators people this is the console I have the console right here I have the discs right here I've got to own everything physically because I just thought that was more interesting I mean it's it's fine if you're not doing that I, I just I for myself I wanted it to be physical and having that will be great because it will make the games look nicer and because it's not a mod on the ps2 itself I can just get another ps2 and this one inevitably dies because it's an older PS2 like the laser dies I can try and revive it but at least I can just plug the next PS2 into it as well as like I said I can plug anything into it and get some nice deinterlacing slash you know line quadrupling really because it's a lot it's 5x so I'm really excited and no, I can't get it yet the website is out of stock so don't expect it within the next even month or two I think it will be by this summer I have it and the rest of the time it'll be beautiful it'll look great I have a couple things to get it's not the only thing I need to get for it to look good I need to get another couple pieces but this will be a very big boost to the quality of the games so they look nice they'll look a little bit more like I'm upscaling them on an emulator so thank you for listening to me ramble at the end of the video here if you watch this thank you so friggin much I really appreciate it and I will see you all guys I'll see you all for the next video bye